Ladies and gents, welcome back. You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. The words of Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum and this sentiment being repeated by Canadian politicians many, many times, of course, always from the Trudeau cabinet. And this time it is from the mouth of Liberal Justice Minister David Lametti, as he says, you don't have an absolute right to your private property. Hey, who is this guy anyway? He's the Honorable, Honorable David Lametti, who is the Justice Minister in Canada, who, well, replaced Jody Wilson-Raybould, as, we, as you may know, Jody Re- Wilson-Raybould was the Minister of Justice, Justice Minister, Attorney General in Canada, up and until the point when she wanted to pursue charges against SNC-Lavalin for their involvement in the scandal that they had going on over there. When she refused to drop the charges or not pursue the charges, she uh, was quickly replaced by this crony who is happy to drop those charges and uh, save Justin Trudeau from further embarrassment in government. Anyway, so here's the story from the counter signal. Justice minister says you don't have an absolute right to your property while responding to a question regarding the seemingly unlawful seizure of property owned by Russians. Liberal minister David Lametti said that people don't have an absolute right to their own property in Canada. Um, We have him quoted here, but I'll just go to the clip. And this was uh, tweeted out by Rubble News. And this is the clip of him saying it. Minister Lemony, I want to ask you about C-19 and the idea of uh, seizing and selling off Russian assets. The idea that some of the reverse say that is on shaky legal ground. How do you respond to that? Well, look, we'll uh, we'll obviously uh, tailor uh, the provisions so that uh, so that um, uh, it could withstand a, a court challenge. You don't have uh, an absolute right to own private property uh, in Canada. Um, it is uh, there are. Uh, there are steps that are taken when expropriations happen at, at whatever level of government, and we'll be sure to stay within those boundaries. Shocking words, shocking words from the Minister of Justice saying, hey, hey, guess what? We're going to tailor our law so that even if you try to claim that this is unconstitutional um, and it goes against the rights uh, laid out in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, Sorry, we're going to make sure that you can't do that. The bill in question is Bill C-19. If passed, would allow the government to seize and seize and cause the forfeiture and disposal of assets held by sanctioned people and entities to support Canada's participation in the, Ru- in the Russian elite's proxy and oligarchs task force in light of Russian illegal invasion of Ukraine. But we all know that this isn't, it never stops there, right? You go after the baddies, um, but then who becomes tomorrow's baddies? Well, just everyday Canadian citizens is the real worry here. As an aside, the bill also include the two-year ban on foreign investment on Canadian housing. Uh, One of their ploys to try to say that they're doing something about the housing crisis in Canada. But meanwhile, opening up immigration so anybody who would fall under that would just immigrate to Canada on paper anyway and then buy whatever property anyhow. So just a do-nothing provision in the law. However, it appears to fly in the face of the United Nations articles they're on the responsibility of states internationally wrongful act while apparently following allowing for the freezing of assets of countries committing wrongful acts and quotes like waging war, it does not appear the act provides for governments to seize those frozen assets as the as it this prevents a resumption of performance allowing the end of a conf or following the end of a conflict. So in other words, saying uh, if you're going to seize people's assets because of the, the conflict that's going on, you need to be able to remunerate people when the conflict is over. So the idea being that if they're trying to take away assets for the purpose of not having those assets be used in the conflict. Well, then they have to be remunerated afterwards, after which this could mean that the true Trudeau is violating international law by selling off Russians legally purchased assets in Canada to redistribute them to Ukraine. 
not to mention it's likely to scare off other countries from investing in Canada. And we've spoken about this at length before about the idea of regime uncertainty when international investors want to come into Canada or any other country and invest their, their, their capital, invest their assets in Canada, uh, the idea that if the there's no there's no safety for them, there's no security in the fact that their assets won't be frozen by the Canadian government and redistributed, as they say. <laughs> this happened in Venezuela a number of years back and led to a massive economic downturn of which uh, they had never seen before in their country. And thanks largely to the actions of Hugo Chavez. But here we are, uh, <laughs> Canadians, the Canadian government taking, oh, what, communist uh, <laughs> talking points and trying to go go with with that and, and go with uh, laws that caused tremendous economic downturn in other countries. As international law advisor David Kleeman uh, explains, once those proceeds and notably Russian assets have been added over to, or sorry, handed over to the Ukrainian government, they're lost. They cannot be returned. Therefore, there is no way of introducing or inducing the resumption of performance of international obligations, he continues. Again, saying they, they can't give it back once they've redistributed it. It's uh, against international law. I believe that the legal question is relatively clear here, that such an action is, or such procedures would violate international law. Nonetheless, as is often the case with the Trudeau government, and law and ethics be damned, um, just like his dad uh, would say, uh, and just watch me. Just watch me do it. I don't care what the actual law says and uh, what may be detrimental to this nation as a whole moving forward and into the future. But here we go. There is the sentiment coming from more members of the Trudeau cabinet that you don't actually own the property that you hold in your possession. It can be taken from you at any given time for whatever reason they see fit. Let me know how you think about that in the comments down below. Let me know what you're thinking here. Uh, is it is it just for or is it is it even wise to move forward in in a situation? Why would anyone come to Canada with their assets? Why would anyone bring their assets here? And why would anyone with assets continue to hold them here in Canada when the chances are they could have that seized at any given time for whatever reason they end up seeing fit and they <laughs> showing, obviously, a will to do that. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. We'll see you guys in the next video. Keep on trucking.